so uh, the first milestone is up for the project, and uh, the, the, the first milestone that you're doing, you're creating a mock-up of the application. That's how the process of an application actually works in real life, which means when an application comes up and the client talks to you, when you understand how things are going to happen, you build a mock-up of an application, which doesn't do anything. It just shows how the application worked if it, if it works, okay? So the outcome of the application running would essentially be uh, uh, something like this. All right, so um, when the program runs, we just want to run the program and see this is what is happening. So this is what is going to be the outcome of the um, of the um, first milestone, which essentially shows that this is happening. Loading items, nothing is being loaded. It's just a message. Then it says loading data from data C data file that CSV, which nothing's going to happen. Then list items. So this has it, it, we just test it being foolproof. So I'll, you enter minus one, it's going to tell that that's wrong. We enter six over here, it's going to say that's wrong. You put into ABC, it's going to say invalid until you try again. Then I put one, it's going to say I'm listing items. Nothing happens. Two, three, four, and five. So it does all these things, and I'll go zero, and it says saving data in the data here, and goodbye. So that's all you do for the first milestone. After you have done this, make sure you do this in a modular way. Bring, put your IPC hat on for every single thing. Create a function. In a function, do it. As you see, the messages coming up over here are identical. So write a function that does these. So you don't have to rewrite it over and over. Do all these things, let it work. And then after this, the next milestone, milestone two is going to come up. You're going to develop two classes. One is called an error, which essentially that class is going to take care of all the uh, erroneous situations in the, in the class, any error that appears, that's, we don't have a flag with, uh, per se. Any error that is kept, it's going to be kept in this, that class, and the other class that you want to create is a date time class that takes care of all the date time entry and stuff of the, of the thing. So those are the two things that you create. After that, we're going to go to milestone three where you are going to create an interface. You're going to find out what it is soon. And then after an interface, you're going to inherit that into an item. And the item is going to be inherited into a perishable item and a non-perishable item, things that you can sell in a grocery store. One is Tide that you can sell, and the other one is Butter. Butter has expiry date. That's a perishable item. And Tide is not, like detergent is not. Therefore, that's non-perishable. Um, and that's it. And then you're going to create. so. Ret storage, like putting all these things in a data, so adding items on a shelf, essentially. That's one, of one, one part of the system. And then after that, and as you see, so you should be able to list and see what you have for sale in the store. You should be able to add items to the store that you want to sell. You need to be able to remove something from the shelf and not sell it anymore. You need to be able to stock items, which means adding to the value of the items that you have already, and you can activate the point of sale. Okay, point of sale is essentially the cash register where you enter the SKU of the thing, beep, and it shows the item and uh, one of that, so you do a beep, it actually adds that one to the list. Will not, it's a very simple one, which means you're not gonna add quantity, so if there are like five, um, I don't know, uh, bottles of, lemon juice, it's five times beep. It's not selling five. You're not going to enter a quantity or anything like that. Very simple. And so, so don't expect this to be like a super duper thing. Okay. So it's, and it has many flaws because if I wanted to go in detail and make it really a point of sale, then you had to program for, for two, three semesters. And we don't want to do that. Right. We just want it to be a simple one and that's it. So that's going to be your project. Any questions about the project? That's the silence. Okay. Um, um, 
the project is done in uh, five milestones, milestone one, two, three, and four. You are building the engine and the infrastructure inside the thing. And milestone five is going to back to milestone one and fill it with action. So milestone five is retaking milestone one, the mock-up you created, and you actually make load items, actually load the items, okay? Uh, and make list items, actually list the items. And you have all the tools for it in milestone two, three, and four. Okay? Based on, so you see over here as approximate workload per days. So I see how simple they are. And I put like this needs five days of work. This needs nine days, 10 days, 14 days, uh, nine, four days, and 14 days. So it shows approximately how much time you need for each milestone. Don't trust it. Assume that it needs half, of, it needs twice of that much, and start it right away. Because lots of people say, oh, that's an easy one. I'm going to do it in the last four minutes, and you're not going to be able to do it. Okay, so please uh, start early. Uh, the first four milestones, it, they don't have a hard due date. So the due date is after five days, but if you are even one week late, you get the full mark for it. Milestone one, two, three, and four. If you are one week submission late, but please don't, okay? Be on time, all right? So uh, if you are even one week late, you're fine. You get the full mark. 10% for each milestone, one, two, three, four, to be timely, which means one week late. After one week, it's not late. It's zero. Pa, done, okay? But you have to submit it because every single test that I do from milestone one, two, and three, and four, I'm not going to do it in milestone five anymore. Other than that, it's going to take you three hours to submit it, okay? All the tests that you pass in one, two, three, and four, they are not done in milestone five. So you do the first four milestones, successfully submit them, so they have to be submitted even if you get zero in it. If you do not submit milestone number three, your project is, will not be marked, okay? And the rejection date of all the milestones is the same at the end of the semester. Milestone five is, because we have five menu items, it's, it's divided into five sections. Each item of the menu getting active takes, gets you 12% of the mark, okay? So for your project to be submittable, so you gain mark out of it, you must submit the first four milestone and at least one of the submissions of milestone five. Okay, so milestone five has five submissions. If you at least do one of those and you submit all the other ones, if, you, if you've done it successfully, you get 52%. Okay, if you do two, then it becomes 64, and it just keeps going up until you get 100% when you submit everything properly. Uh, Expect that milestones one, two, three, and four change as we are going. So it's possible that I go to milestone four and I see, oops, I made a design in two that is wrong. Error class should do this that I did not cover. I'm going to ask you to go back and fix it. That happens in life cycle of any type of application. So don't think that it's final. I did milestone two, done. No, that's not the case. However, if you submit your milestones successfully, and in milestone three or uh, three, you see milestone two needs to change to do something, by all means. You don't need to ask me, can I change milestone two? You can. You can change any code that you want at any time and moment as you want it. And that's your project. You don't have DIY anymore for your workshops. You notice workshop six doesn't have a DIY. Um, and uh, I strongly suggest to Clean up your code in utils and bring it with you. Okay, clean up your utils.cpp uh, and utils.h. Make sure the code works efficiently and nicely at, and as the outputs match what the project is and reuse it. That shortens the, the development time by approximately 40%. Instead of developing another uh, evaluated integer entry, you can just use the one that you have in util, so reuse your code. If for, in my section, now if other people are listening to this, uh, I don't know, but sections that Farda teaches, your citation 
must include even the code that I give you. So if I put something in utils that you did not write, you are taking my code, you simply, for that you don't lose mark. So the citation of the code that I have given you in class or your code that you're copying from me will not cost you any marks. You get full mark and it's very okay. You just have to cite it. But if you get a piece of code of mine and you don't cite it, it's considered cheating. I want you to practice citation, understand what does it mean to give credit to someone else's work. That's part of the process. So even if you see, and I'm going to separate because it's not in the definition of the, of the, of the workshop, I'm going to send you a separate announcement on this. Even the code, if, if the code is mine and you're getting from one of the workshops or you're getting not one of the workshops of your own code, one of the lectures that I had and I wrote some code over there and you see, oh, this is an exact match, I can use this. You can use it, no cost, you can do it, you're not going to lose any mark, but you have to cite it, okay? So, if you submit a milestone successfully, and later on in changes, we ask you to add a few things and remove. You don't need to resubmit it. It is perfectly okay. You submit one thing success, anything successfully, you're done with it. You do not need to resubmit it anymore. Any other question? Yes. If you get a help from IPs, if the code, if, the, if it's your own code, no. But if the code is a code that is shared between 50 other students, cite it. Because another person is going to use it, then you have to go through the hassle proving that it's not the same thing. Anything that you, know, you think this is going to appear on someone else's, cite it and tell why. Okay, so you are clear. Even, even if you shouldn't have done it, you only lose 2% for that piece. So do it. Yes. Yes. The question was one week after when? So it says over here, milestone one, March 10th, that is four days from now, gets full mark even one week late, gets zero afterwards. But you still have to submit it. And then 16 comes over here, MS 5-1, 12%, 5-2, 5-3, and I'm going to explain what, what it is. So essentially these five are the five menu items of your code. Okay, menu item one, two. So if you only do five, three, that's still okay. You don't have to be in order. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. 